Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. Thanks for joining me. This is our second lesson on uh, aircraft engines and system. We are going to discuss carburation. The carburetor is used to meter the fuel and air into the engine at the correct quantity and ratio. If we look here on the right, we have a uh, schematic of how a carburetor works. We start off with a fuel inlet right here, where fuel comes from the fuel tank. Then inside uh, the carburetor here is a float chamber right here. Okay. And a float, which is right here, that meters the fuel coming into the carburetor uh, so that there's always a correct amount of fuel inside uh, this carburetor float. From there, the fuel travels along here to right here, these jets. Then the air comes in right here, comes in, it's ram air, you have a lot of air coming in. You have a venturi, and if you recall, a venturi creates a negative pressure. This negative pressure sucks the fuel from the carburetor and the fuel gets atomized at the discharge nozzle. Up here we have the throttle valve or the butterfly valve right here, which regulates the amount of fuel-air mixture going to the intake port. The fuel-air mixture must be stoichiometrically correct by mass or at least close. And been a while since we've taken high school chemistry. What that means, it has to be at the correct ratio. So fuel, gasoline is a hydrocarbon. Uh, it is mostly octane. So it has eight uh, carbons and 18 hydrogens. And a hydrocarbon burns when it is mixed together with oxygen. And the products are carbon dioxide and oxygen. Here I have a balanced chemical equation for the uh, combustion of octane. Now, there are a number of different fuel air mixtures that are uh, that come up. The best running mixture is one to eight. So we have one part fuel, eight parts uh, uh, air, and that is full rich for takeoff. That keeps the engine rather cool. The best running power is one to 14. The stoichiometric uh, ratio is 1 to 15 by mass. So that, that will be uh, that you will have no excess. You will only have carbon dioxide and water vapor coming out. I, in theory, you'd have no uh, excess oxygen or excess octane. The lowest fuel burn is lean of peak at 118. And then the leanest, leanest you can run the engine, one part fuel to 20 parts uh, air. And this is by mass. So you can imagine by uh, volume, just how much more air is going through that engine than fuel. The mixture control is connected to the carburetor and it's used to adjust the fuel air ratio and it affects the fuel consumption, the power and the exhaust gas temperature. A leaner mixture will have a higher exhaust gas temperature. In most aircraft it is manually controlled and you want to use the mixture control at high altitudes where the air is less dense to ensure that the fuel air ratio is correct. The mixture control works by reducing the fuel going to the engine uh, by closing the metering valve inside the carburetor. When you lean the mixture, the exhaust gas temperature increases. And the reason it does that is because when you have a full rich mixture, you have an excess amount of fuel. What this excess amount of fuel is used to cool the engine. And as we lean it, we reduce that excess fuel and all the fuel is now being burned as opposed to going through and coming out the exhaust in a liquid form. It's very important that you lean the mixture when above 3000 feet or whenever you're going for a considerable distance. The fuel consumption changes by as much as 50% when we compare the properly leaned mixture to the full rich mixture. Here's a graph on the bottom. As we lean the mixture, the EGT rises because the fuel, we have less fuel available for cooling. At the peak EGT, after that, the EGT will start dropping again. This is called operating the engine lean of peak. It's typically only done with uh, 
on engines with proper engine monitoring equipment. And at that point, you have excess air that will cool the engine. We probably remember this from a previous lesson about carburetor icing, and this comes up quite a bit in tests. You can expect to be tested on this both on your written test as well as your flight test. So why would the carburetor ice up? Well, let's take a look at it. Here we have air going through in this venturi. In the venturi, we have a reduction in pressure and a reduction in temperature. This reduction in temperature can cause the water vapor in the air to freeze as it goes through the carburetor. What temperatures do you think carburetor icing would be most pronounced? Minus 40, plus 40, around zero? Well, the correct answer is going to be around zero, technically between minus five and plus 10 degrees Celsius. But let's ask, why doesn't it freeze at, let's say minus 20 or minus 30? Well, remember that the water vapor at minus 20 or minus 30 is likely already going to be frozen like snow, and it will just pass through the carburetor harmlessly. However, when it's plus 10 out and high humidity, the water vapor is still in a liquid form. That liquid water vapor goes through the venturi, cools down, and freezes. Of course, at uh, plus 30 degrees, let's just say, we're not going to get carburetor icing because the carburetor will not decrease the temperature below freezing when it's that warm out. Here's a picture of a carburetor uh, with a lot of ice on it, and you can see it forms around the body of the carburetor as well as the throttle valve. It's important to note that if we suspect carburetor icing, so the engine's starting to run rough and the temperature and the humidity uh, is in the area of where we could expect carburetor icing. We let's say turn the carburetor heat on, the engine starts, will start running rough. This can be expected because the ice is melting and going through the engine as liquid water. When the engine starts running rough, it is imperative that you keep the carburetor heat on. Once the ice is fully melted, the engine RPM will start increasing again. And once it does, you can turn off the carb heat if you wish to. But remember, you want to check it regularly to ensure that you haven't developed any carburetor ice. If you want to guess what the uh, humidity is outside, look at the temperature and dew point spread. When the temperature and dew point spread is very narrow, so let's say the temperature is five degrees and the dew point's four, there's a good chance the relative humidity will be very high. The carburetor heat takes uh, the air from an alternate source. It does not take it through the regular air filter. Therefore, you do not want to use carburetor heat on the ground because it is using unfiltered air and could pick up dust and other contaminants. Carburetor heat increases the intake air temperatures. Remember that hot air is less dense than cold air and therefore you are going to be getting less mass of air going into the engine with the carburetor heat on, meaning the mixture will be rich. So it's often a good idea when you pull the carburetor heat on to also lean the mixture to the uh, proper setting so that you maintain a properly leaned mixture. Let's review. The carburetor meters fuel and air going into the engine. The mixture control adjusts the fuel air mixture. Carburetor icing occurs when it is humid, humid and cool out, and the carburetor heat enriches the mixture. What is the purpose of the venturi in the carburetor? So you can remember that the venturi creates a low pressure which will draw fuel into the carburetor body. A would be correct. B is not correct because it does not act as a throttle. That's what the throttle valve is for. A C, carburetor does not have a venturi. That's not correct. And D, to adjust the fuel air ratio. No, nope, that's not correct either. That's what the mixture control does. And it does that by uh, metering the amount of fuel going into the float chamber. Here's a chemistry question for you. Too rich a mixture will result in exhaust that. So remember, too rich a mixture means that we have more fuel that can be burned. So more fuel and less air. So we're going to have an excess amount of reactant or fuel 
in the right side of the chemical equation. So it will result in an exhaust that is rich in unused fuel. What is carburetor ice most likely? So recall, carburetor ice is most likely when the temperature is around freezing and the relative humidity high. So if we look at it, that will be answer D. The ones that say minus 20 will not have carburetor icing because the air is too cold. There will not be any liquid water uh, vapor in the air. It will all have been frozen. And answer B is not correct because the relative humidity is too low. There's not enough water vapor to create icing. That concludes this lesson on uh, the carburetor. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you in the next lesson.